Does Channel Pup is furry? Channel Pup is furry is the most discussed in media in the few years ago. Even it has happened in 2012, but some of the public is still curious about what exactly is happening and to be the reason there is a rumor comes out about his furry. At that time he became the massive social networking rumor. The public, especially his fans, are shocked. He just came out with his bad rumor, which is spread massively. This time not about his music career, but about his bad rumor. The rumor is out of standardized of hoax. According to the last reported, this guy revealed himself as furry. Do you still believe or not? This rumor is really much talked by people, even in a person of his fans. Alright, makes sense. Well, in full relation to that, this video is indeed sponsored by HelloFresh. See me, I'm something of a foodie. But being the undisciplined little pig that I am, all too often I will cook a banquet for myself and so not to waste it, I will eat that entire banquet. Which, well, simply put, it isn't good for me, but it's also pretty expensive. And that, my little friends, is where HelloFresh comes in. I no longer need to waste money on food I don't need, as all HelloFresh recipes come with pre-portioned ingredients to make sure that I have just the right amount for each recipe. Not only that, it's a whole lot cheaper than grocery shopping, even at the full price. Therefore, cutting off the excess costs. And the HelloFresh market also serves as my one-stop shop for all my meal and snack needs. I'm quite a breakfast enthusiast. They got it. Savory soups? There it is. Focaccia pizzas? Hell yeah. Satisfying snacks and sides? Yep, they got it. And if I have room for dessert, well, they've got me covered. Use my link and go to HelloFresh.com and use my discount code POGSY14445. That's P-O-G-S-E-14445 for 16 free meals across seven boxes plus three surprise gifts. And once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Gifts include free appetizers, free desserts, and free premium recipes. HelloFresh, more like hell yeah fresh. It's time to finally come clean and answer a burning question. Am I a furry? Yeah, you wouldn't believe how many people are genuinely a little curious about this or think they have the right answer to that question. <laughs> You'd think minding one's own business would come into effect, but I can't blame someone for speculating that the guy with the dog avatar might just be a furry. Now, the truth be told, I've never taken offense to the idea of being a furry, because as far as I see it, being a furry is just another way of people people expressing themselves. It's really not my business if someone has an affinity for anthropomorphic animals and wants to dress like one. And in terms of, shall we say, adult activities, well, as long as they're keeping it to themselves and in the bedroom and they're not involving minors or actual animals or anything that can't consent, we're all kind of good. It's none of my business. Now, I have seen the Rainforest documentary over on Internet Historian, and yeah, there are some savages among the pack, but I do think the same can be said of any community. That doesn't really excuse it though, really. That stuff was, man, that stuff was vile. Like, dude, look at Rainforest. It's, it's nasty. So what actually is a furry? Because, like, it can have many kind of definitions. Well, it kind of all revolves around the affinity for anthropomorphic animal characters, usually exhibiting a lot of humanoid traits. The kind of thing originated in people that kind of felt that humans were a bit too serious, animals are a lot more fun. It can revolve around art or cosplay. So, is the guy that makes YouTube videos with the facade of a talking dog that takes on a lot of humanoid features a furry because to all intents and purposes there is a lot that lines up and truth be told I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking that I would be a furry and uh, nor would I ever want to reject the furry community members that do enjoy my content. Well I guess the bottom line here is we're kind of explaining what the whole pup persona thing is. Is it a fursona? Does it count? You see this pup is not just like a Mickey Mouse character effectively like he is someone I'm actively speaking through. He is how I've chosen to represent myself online effectively. So to determine whether or not I am a furry, we'd have to kind of ask the question of why the pup persona? Well, let's wind the clocks back to the beginning of the Channel Pup YouTube channel. I felt it was important for a YouTube channel to have a face. A face is something that the audience can kind of relate to. It's why there is so much enthusiasm towards YouTuber face reveals. It gives us someone kind of tangible. But 
No matter how much practice I got, I am hugely uncomfortable in front of the camera. It also completely changes the pace of my editing style. When I'm just recording this as audio for starters, I'm less trembly, so my voice is a little less wobbly. But if I flub my lines, I delete it as I go. It's not so easy to do when doing a video recording. It creates the most streamlined and frankly painless editing process for me. So while I don't want to show my face on camera, I don't want my channel to be faceless as such, so I thought it was a wise idea to have a mascot instead. But then, why a dog? Well, let me introduce you to my bestest buddy in the whole world. This is Toby, aka Bear. We must have gotten Toby as a puppy when I was like 10 years old and I grew up with this little guy by my side. Me and Toby were close. We grew up together from him being a playful puppy to me just being this little kid and we were basically playmates. And we'd gone through a lot together. My sister moving out, moving to France, my dad passing away, and me and Toby, we stayed close. My home situation could be quite a difficult one as well. My mother and my father would often fight quite a bit, but Toby was always there to just cuddle up to me during those times. And I think some of my fondest memories living at my old childhood home were when my parents would go away on holiday and it would just be me and Toby. Whether he was playing around or just sitting by me while I played video games, he was just good company. The bottom line, Toby was just awesome. He was a clever crafty boy, but he was also a total goofball. Everybody thinks their dog is special. And I guess that's no exception for Toby, but Toby was an exceptional dog, don't get that twisted. He was gentle, he was well behaved, but he was very enthusiastic and boisterous too. There wasn't a single thing this little guy would do without the utmost enthusiasm. And you know what? He was the most kindest, most noble boy in the world. If you want like a reference point for just how noble and how brave this little guy was, well, in his last days, he was suffering really badly with arthritis in his back legs. It completely decimated his quality of life, and he was pretty much in pain 24-7. Poor guy never deserved that. Now, I'd moved out of the old family home at this point, but I'd occasionally visit just to see him. And the time came when I knew that it was his last day, so I called in sick to work and I went home to see him. Now, the situation had kind of gotten so bad that, like, laying down was difficult for him. He could no longer just tuck his little back legs in and lay down like a normal dog would. He had to basically put all of his weight on his front paws and just let gravity do its thing for the back ones until his lower back is completely lowered and then he could just get down. It would take him a few minutes just to lay down the poor guy. And I recall he was laying down on his tummy and I went over to stroke him and ask how he was doing. I said, don't worry about getting up, it's all good. He gets up, <laughs> the little idiot gets up. He gets up, starts wagging his tail, puts on that little Toby show for me. You know, that little, oh, I love you thing that dogs do. Starts pressing his snoot against me, and puts his ears down and he's looking at me with this loving, reassuring look in his eyes. But you could tell he was in pain and he was doing everything he could to to hide that and he was doing everything he could to try and be reassuring towards me. And it just, it might sound silly, but just that little gesture of him getting up after making all that effort just to get rested and be in all that pain and to look at me and look at me as if say, it's okay. Like that is so, so special. Like he, he was absolutely a special, special dog. And it absolutely broke my heart having to say goodbye to him. As a way of kind of coping with that, I found ways to work Toby just into my everyday life life, to always be reminded of the friendship that I had with that little guy, to be reminded of how lucky I was to be the one to grow up with him by my side. Because at the end of the day, what we have in this world with our pets are still ultimately these chance encounters. Like there's billions and billions of people on this planet, billions of animals on this planet. So what are the odds of finding someone as special as Toby and getting to live out my childhood with that really special little guy? So I just made sure that Toby could still feel present in my world. I, I made sure that I had little ornaments that would be reminders of Toby, pictures of him. Uh, my, my wallpaper on my phone was a picture of Toby. I have Toby fridge magnets and stuff. And 
nevertheless, the same went for my YouTube channel as well. I finally landed on what I wanted this mascot to be, and I decided it would be a black Staffordshire Bull Terrier, just like Toby. And you know, mascots are supposed to be as appealing as possible, and I couldn't think of anything more appealing than little Toby's happy smile. And that was the entire motivating factor behind Channel Pup speaking through the pup, basically. And the file name of the digital puppet that is the Channel Pup Pup is called Toby the Terrier. So the motivating factor for the Channel Pup design wasn't an affinity for anthropomorphic animals, but instead an after effect of a bond between man and dog, and a determination for Toby to remain as big a part of my world as he was when he was alive. Now, the truth be told, though, there is still an argument to be made, I guess. Like, it's pretty obvious by now that I do gravitate towards animal characters. It's why characters like Sonic and Klonoa have captured my imagination far more than, say, Mario. And of course, before I was Channel Pup, I was Channel Goat, and yeah, I did have a goat YouTuber avatar. So there is clearly something of an appreciation for anthropomorphic animals, and I think in many ways that does boil down to that when I was growing up, I think some of my favorite cartoons were Rocco's Modern Life and Duckman. I've always thought that animals lend well to appealing character designs because animals are just naturally appealing. So I do think Toby or no Toby, it's quite clear that this was always going to be an animal of some form, be it a goat or a pup. But the truth be told, I've never had an aversion to human character designs either, because all the same, I love superhero characters too. And you know, the original Channel Pup design, as it's been dubbed the Kazoo design by Adzinko, was literally Toby wearing a Spider-Man costume doing the Sonic 2 ending pose. The bottom line is, I just think animals are neat. At no point have I ever registered some kind of affinity towards anthropomorphic animals. I just kind of think they're neat. I've never at any point said to myself or thought to myself, yeah, I'm a furry. That's, that's not really happened. It's not something I've ever really registered, but I would be in denial if I said that there weren't certain aspects of my personality that do at least line up. If I'm designing my own characters, they tend to be animals. I see it more as me wearing influences on my sleeve, such as Rocco's Modern Life, but I can certainly see where you'd get the idea that I might be somewhere on the furry spectrum. So if you do want the overall answer, is Channel Papa Furry? The answer is probably not but it's not something I've given any real thought up until now. Just for this little thought experiment that I thought might make a somewhat interesting video. But uh, are you a furry? That's the question. And do you have like a furry origin story? Do you, do you think I'm a furry? Have you like, you know, got some kind of, uh, I don't know, furry prognosis for me? Well, that's what the comments section is for. And I really look forward to finding out. I'm gonna see you so soon. I say you've made it to the end of the video! Congrats. No, but seriously, thanks a bunch for watching. And just now, I'll be extending a special thanks to the patrons in the $10 tier, who are the amazing Adam Myers, the courageous Ken K, the legendary, legendary Ray Ray, the magnificent Mr. SP, and the Super Sergio. One amazing and generous bunch of people. Thank you guys so much for your support. And if you want to join the ranks of these amazing people right here, the link to my patron is in the description below. Guys, these are not the easiest times in the world financially, so every little bit you folks are donating is doing wonders. I really would love to be able to do YouTube as a proper fully fledged career someday. It might just be a pipe dream, but maybe you guys can prove some people wrong. But of course, if donations aren't your thing, then, well, it means plenty to me that you just hit that cute little subscribe button over there. I, 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 I didn't mean hit that way. Well, that's me done for the day. Thanks a whole bunch for your support and have a fantastic day. I'm gonna see you so soon.